So I'll let the, my wife start tonight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we will be talking about protecting the family circle. Mm -hmm. So that's an important topic, we think. So what do we mean by family circle? Uh, it's a uh, family members that God has put together. Uh, generally, it's the, the wife, the husband, and the children, or it can be the, the mother and the children, or the father and the children. Uh, so that's the family circle. That's the close <laughs> ties that God has put uh, together. <laughs> and uh, we want you to talk about that because um, in our society, uh, there are so many things that come at families. Mm -hmm. It can be work, it can be a ministry, it can be even the, the church. Not that we should go away from these things, but uh, sometimes we can get so busy with things uh, that are good. Uh, it can be also uh, friends, it can be other family members, um, and um, which are good things to have around. Mm -hmm. But we have to remember that we got to prioritize, that we put God first, mm -hmm. and then it's the family circle, and then we have the rest. Mm -hmm. Even the church uh, should come after the family. Uh, there is a verse, by the way, that uh, talks about something like that, which is um, Philippians chapter 2, verse 2, that says, Fulfill, no, excuse me, that's uh, 1 Timothy 3. Four, four and five mm -hmm. that says one that rule well his own house having his children in subjection with all gravity for if any man know not how to rule his own house how shall he take care of the church of God mm -hmm. so that's just one verse that shows us about the order that uh, uh, Paul was talking to Timothy about ruling just the house mm -hmm. first and then the church so mm -hmm. we can see the order there yeah yeah and i like the way how you just presented that and that's the way it is exactly how god has structured it so it has to be god first and then family um for a lot of us even me i didn't realize until recently by studying and you know that fam our family is the greatest ministry above everything else um god has given us the responsibility to have children so our children and our family is a ministry of itself and how are we ministering to our children and keeping our family circle in order? So we have God first and family. And the reason why we have God first is that once we have God first in our lives and we follow after Christ, that reflection of Christ will go into our family circle as we minister to our children and to our, our wives or our husband. Mm -hmm. And they will see Christ in us. And by seeing Christ in us, it will bring the family unit stronger together to bind us. Um, it also, I would like to share this verse. The reason why God wants the family to come before even the church or even before any other thing, work, any other thing, the family comes first. Um, in Genesis 2.24, the Bible says, Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. Now, when the two come together in marriage, it's one flesh. Now, if you remember, when you come with God, you have to be of one mind with Christ. So God wants this, the home to be a, like a, a dwelling place where he can dwell, but we have to connect with God first. And once we connect with God, we reflect that in our family, protect our family circle, um, guard our family from the things of the world, and then we go out and we do the other tasks that God has entrusted us with. Now, if we have a home that's not guarded, it'll be hard for us to function at our jobs, in a church, and even in these other stuff. So that's why God wants us to protect our family and be a great mi uh, minister in our home. Yeah, that's right. And uh, like we have to be very, we have to be very prayer, prayerful mm -hmm. and very careful. Um, sometimes people might mean well, mm -hmm. um, but you know, they might um, start a discussion to for you to tell things about your family, mm -hmm. relationship with your husband, mm -hmm. and, and things like that, or or uh, sometimes even meeting um, other people outside mm -hmm. of the family circle too often, or maybe uh, that sometimes some relationship might not be healthy for the family circle. Mm -hmm. We have to be very careful. Like, for example, for me, I, I told myself that if there is anything or anybody 
that would um, break this family circle, that would um, decrease uh, or deteriorate the, the relationships between me and my husband or me and my children or between the children, I would walk away from these things, mm -hmm. even if people don't realize and maybe they mean well. But that's something that is healthy to do because that's uh, something we need to protect the family circle. And that's why we have to have discernment because like, as you mentioned, um, you, as much as we have friends and we have a, there's a difference that we, sh we should always know who our friends are and who our associates are. Now, even if you have friends, it doesn't mean that you tell them everything that's going on in your family. Yeah. Some things are better left unsaid and those things you take to Christ in exactly. prayer yeah. and you ask God to help you work those things out in your family. Mm -hmm. Now, we have to remember something, we're all carnal and because men is all carnal, yeah. Um, you know, we don't know what someone else is trying to, or how they're looking at us, what they're saying behind our backs. So certain things in your family should be kept only within your family circle to keep out any um, bad influences from the devil that they can try to throw to us. Now, there's a saying that I use, I grew up with, is that your friend always have another friend. So when you tell someone something, that person can tell someone, and it's a chain effect. So that's why certain things, keep it in your family circle, protect your family circle, take it to God and pray about it. As Psalms 119, 114 says, thou art my hiding place and my shield, I hope in thy word. Let God be your shield, let God be your hiding place. Take all your troubles, your cares and whatever's in your family to Christ and with your relationship, let God deal with it and don't expose it to people who um, wouldn't give you any good uh, advice or any uh, or lead you in the right path. That's right. Yeah, sometimes it's, it might be necessary to speak up of something. Uh, let's say in the uh, ha household there is a, um, a violent person or something. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's, it's necessary to speak up to tell a good friend or to tell somebody in the church. Sometimes it's really necessary to say things that happen in the, in the family, but for other things that are really not necessary, if it's not health or like safety, uh, yeah, bring it to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And he wants that. He wants us to bring everything to him and to trust that he is the one right. who will make everything good. Um, we can Sometimes we can ask to a good friend, a trusting uh, somebody we can trust for a specific prayer if there is a situation, but uh, Jesus ultimately is the one who can make things happen mm -hmm. um, to, to, uh, if we have issues in our family, especially in marriage or... Um, especially in marriage, yeah. yes. When it comes to the children, sometimes we can tell others because, you know, for prayer. But uh, yeah, especially in marriage, we gotta be very careful. Because you have to remember that the devil hates marriage. This is why he targets marriage because two things God ordained in the Garden of Eden, it was a mm -hmm. Sabbath and marriage. And he will try to find any little crack that he can to come in to break a marriage. He's already doing that with the Sabbath, how he's deceiving people with the Sabbath. So his next target is how can I break marriages? So that's why you have to be very careful with the marriages. Because if you see when, when people go through a, a split in a marriage, look at what happened to the children. It has a ripple effect on the family. So he targets the marriage. So that's why we have to be careful how we guard our family especially our marriages. Yeah, that's right. And I think um, I want you to say finally, we need to have uh, Jesus at the center of the, of the mm -hmm. family. That Jesus is the center of the circle, the family circle. Mm -hmm. And uh, when all the family members have Jesus in their heart, or even if it's not all, because sometimes it's hard for mm -hmm. when we have children, but we can pray for them. But at least if the parents have Jesus in their heart or even one person in the family, you know, it will really help to strengthen this family circle. That's right. And there is also a saying that says, a family that prays together stays together. Stays together. Yes. So. And Psalms 91 4 says, He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. Mm -hmm. He shall, his truth shall be a shield and a buckler. Mm -hmm. So God will cover your family. When you come together and you pray together, God will cover your family and send his heavenly angels to surround you and to take care of your family and to guide you as a family and lead you. That's right. That's yes. right. So, so we did 10 minutes. Yes. Perfectly 10 minutes. Yes. <laughs> 
So, so now we're open for suggestions, comments, and anyone want to share uh, any thoughts on what we discussed. Yeah, thank you guys so much for that presentation. Um, one one part of it was kind of a rebuke for me. It was a rebuke for me. Um, I am um, sometimes can be transparent, mm-hmm. and and like we have to be careful being transparent with the wrong people and like you said in about your marriage or your family and um i have felt the backlash of that like oversharing then i would say oversharing and um and like not bringing just bringing it to the lord Mm -hmm. um and and other instances where I've said to myself, you know what? If my if my experience can help somebody else, my God will cover me. Mm-hmm. You know, and and this is kind of how I I move. But I do. I have to be careful. I have to remind myself. Not everybody cares about your story. Not everybody cares. You know, mm-hmm. and you you have to, like you said, ask the Holy Spirit to guide you. Mm-hmm. In, in as you're sharing um so that that's something that in my 49 years I'm learning and and, and um you're never too old to learn something new so yes that is very important that we guard our home because a lot of women you can sit down with women and you know my husband didn't wash the dishes I didn't even put a no you don't you know you don't want to do things like that. You have to be very careful, even about your children. That's right. Sharing about your children. And my kids are very, you know, they're, they're 21, almost 22 and 15. So, you know, I, I have to be very careful, mm-hmm. but, you know, because they are, um, they're older now. So, so it's very important that we do protect the home and things that we share out there and you know that like you said the devil is out to destroy the Mm -hmm. family and the other point that you brought up my mind is going Mm -hmm. I forgot the first part that you you were talking about was it protecting the home yes oh your ministry like Mm -hmm. how you extend yourself how Mm -hmm. much you extend yourself Mm -hmm. and 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 for me that is um very important because it's Mm -hmm. two years now that i'm living this temperate life right and there's uh, there's areas that i'm uh, that i struggle with you know now with the lord's help but temperate in how much I extend myself. I would be that person. I got this. I'll do this. I'll help you. And I'll do, okay, I got you. I'll get it for you. I'll go. I'll take you. You yeah. know, and I mm-hmm. had to learn that that is not good. That is mm-hmm. not good for your home, for your own temperament. Yeah. As mothers, we want to overextend ourselves. Mm-hmm. And then when we come home, our children get the bare minimum. Our husbands get the bare minimum, and like you said, your ministry is in your home yeah. first. And for me, like my husband doesn't go to church, so my walk with God has to be—I don't know how to explain it to you. Like I can't look to nobody else but God. That's right. You know, because when it's time to bring the children to worship, I'm doing it. So, and you know, a lot of people say, well, the husband should, I said, but he, if he's not ready yet, That's he's right. not doing it, do I not do it? Mm-hmm. I'm doing it so I could be an example to him, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. So it's it's a lot of dynamics, different homes have different dynamics, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And, and it's so, um, it's so hard. But this, this is a very, really good topic that could go so so deep because you have like I grew up with just my grandparents and my grandfather and my grandmother they would my grandfather would bring us to worship it's worship time it's mm-hmm. dinner time you know I grew up with that but then when I went to my mom it was just a single mother and she just did everything and she wasn't in church at that time mm-hmm. so some people are being raised with just a single mother just you mm-hmm. know different dynamics in the home 
And it's so important that we look to Christ, whatever the situation, to still protect what, you know, he has given us. That's right. So, yeah, really, really good topic. Really, really good. Yeah. Amen. And just some words of encouragement. You keep doing what you're doing. Uh, keep um, allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you and God to lead you to set the example. Because another thing, a great, the greatest example we can set towards someone that's looking at us is our lifestyle. You know, our lifestyle as a Christian, How? what do we reflect, our actions, what are we doing? So more people look at us and see what a real Christian is than by what we say. So we have to uh, do the work, do the work and not just talk it. We have to talk it and do it. But most people go by what they see and how they see you're living your life, what you're doing. And trust me, if you keep praying, the Holy Spirit will eventually one day lead that person into conversion. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yes. And also, when you were when you were saying mm -hmm. that uh, sometimes you might say things to friends, and I think it happened to all of us. We mm -hmm. might uh, say little things, you know, to friends, and I think that it, depending on the situation, sometimes. Well, most of most of the time, I, we should bring it to Jesus and Jesus uh, all the time. alone. All no, the time. wait, because there, I remember there is a verse in the Bible that says um, it's in Proverbs somewhere that says that um, when we should bring sometimes our problem to two or three right. counselors or something Matthew like that. Matthew talks about that too. Yeah. yeah, that sometimes it's necessary to bring a situation that might arise. Like some, sometimes it's necessary to bring a situation to. To, to counsel us, like maybe two or three, to get godly uh, counsels mm -hmm. that are from God's world and not against God's world. But most of the time, is yeah, we should keep it for ourselves. But there are situations when we should speak up. And right. And, so and, and in terms of like personal stuff, like let's say you're going to have a prayer request, you can just say pray for my family. Or if someone asks you, how is your family? You don't need to give them personal detail. Yeah, you can just yeah. say, we're doing okay by God's graces and pray for me and my family. We just need prayer. They don't need to know the details. Mm -hmm. But then if you have a friend that you're confiding or you're very confident in, you can tell them a little bit of the details, but you don't need to go into all the details. Mm -hmm. But you can still confide in that person and give them some yeah. details. But I always encourage that friend to pray for you, to pray for you and your family. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. I was going to say, um, it's a good reminder to, um, like safeguard your family mm -hmm. because oftentimes, you know, you're talking to people in the church and you're not thinking, you don't know their, their underlining thoughts or anything. And sometimes mm -hmm. it could be malicious. It could be, um, they might not have any good intentions mm -hmm. and you're just freely talking, thinking, you know, this is another parent and they have a same, they might have a. We lost you, Shannon. Maybe she has a connection. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. She'll be back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but thank you for your... I don't necessarily have to go in. Are you guys hearing me? Yeah, yeah, yeah we can hear now. you. Yeah. Okay. You, you, like you said, you don't have to necessarily um, tell, tell the situation to the person. You <laughs> could say, you know, just pray for my family. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because um, sometimes not everyone necessarily want the best for you and it's sad yeah. you would think that you could um share things with other christian parents and so forth mm -hmm. you know what i mean because sometimes when you do that they might be able to give you some advice like oh i've been through that with my child or mm -hmm. you know what i mean mm -hmm. and um most times it's, it's interesting now like my kids would be like oh if they hear me overhear me on the phone they'd be like oh mommy why are you telling my business <laughs> you know and i'm like that's your aunt Mm -hmm. You know, like I'm, I'm speaking to your aunt. Your aunt could, you know, help or share some perspective as well. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's not to say I'm sharing um, specific things, but if right. I know, you know, she has the same, she might be going through the same thing, or right. you know, we could both be going through the same thing, and we could share our perspective. She might be able to tell me to do something that could help me. I might be able to tell her something that can help her. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's it's so true. You don't share any and everything with everyone. That's right. Mm -hmm. But because mm -hmm. you're in the church, you're just thinking, you know, everyone is, you know, Christ minded and they would yeah. they would pray for you and sometimes that's not necessarily mm -hmm. always the case. Yeah. So it's a, a good reminder to just be mindful of 
the things you say and and I guess sometimes sometimes you could you could feel some, some people out because yes you're in the church but not everybody that's going to the church and attending the church necessarily is there for the right thing you know that's what right. I mean exactly mm -hmm. that's right um, especially when you deal with your family and, and your kids especially you know mm -hmm. yeah. and um, it, it was so this week I was watching something um, it was a married couple talking you know um, yeah they said they're Christians and stuff like that but um, the, the, the wife was saying she has a really good friend um, that stay, sleeps over at her home hmm. but she was saying people are like you're, you guys are married. Why are you having a single friend sleep at your house? Mm -hmm. And it was kind of like, uh, that's not a wise decision and, and so forth. Just, just something like that. And I'm like, uh, I, I, I don't get it. I don't see the, I don't see the problem in that. Mm -hmm. But they were saying she's single. Um, and you're there with your husband. Like that looks bad or something. And I'm thinking to myself, I've had I've had that many times where my friends slept at my house before, mm -hmm. and I didn't I didn't feel any way around uh, with her being single, being around my husband, my family. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um, it was just it was just interesting the the different topics and things they were talking about. But they mentioned that, and I was like, I don't see anything wrong with that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yes, mm -hmm. as married people, we, we may have some single friends, but we can still advise them and help them and stuff like that. And I don't see, you know, anything wrong with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's That's I think it uh, it depends the friend. <laughs> I think it depends the friends. If the friend is really respectful and, you know, well, it's hard to say you can trust the person, but you can, you can, you can discern, you know, sometimes how the friend is. Mm -hmm. But if the friend is, uh, you know, provocative and disrespectful yes. and having some strange attitude is different. But otherwise, yeah, we, we have to help out our friends if they need sometimes mm -hmm. something. But uh, depends what kind of friend. I'm going to let you women discuss that. I'll just sit back. No. Well, <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I was going to say, it, it never opened my mind to, not even uh, my, my friend, but just letting certain people in your home that's but you know, you know what i mean to be honest yeah. with you to be honest with you we have to be very careful who we let in our homes um mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There, there, there's there's something that i don't know that from off my head the book and the quote but there's it says that we have to be careful who we let mm -hmm. into our homes because we don't know what those people are dealing with or what they can yeah. bring into our homes yeah. so we have mm -hmm. to be careful what spirits they can bring in so we have yeah. to be careful who comes through our doors and who is around our family in our homes because we yes. have to remember the battle is a spiritual battle we wrestle that against flesh and blood mm -hmm. and we don't know what people do in their homes right yeah and we don't know what they're involved in and they can bring that into our homes yes, yes. Yes. Yeah. And you know another thing too, Shalom. I I I don't know about that whole. <laughs> um, that was a really tough one, okay. But um, but like he said, if you know the person uh -huh. with prayer. But another thing too with bringing people in your home is also, and because this is a line for parents, you have to know. The children you have around your children. Yes. Oh yes, yes. definitely. Even yeah. those children can be exposed to certain things Correct. you don't know about. Exactly. Yeah. And then there goes you figure, oh go play, go play outside. Oh go play, go you know. Mm -hmm. And I know Asalia and I, we have been in this. I don't know if she's still on, but we have been where we go over to someone's house and we're having lunch and all the adults in one room. Mm -hmm. And we're all engaging in conversation. And mm -hmm. Natalia was like, wait a minute. Where are the children? Mm -hmm. We have to make sure we're... You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and That's like, right. So mm -hmm. having, you know, that friend with you, like, hey, wait. Let's focus. Yeah. Let's make sure the children are being supervised. And mm -hmm. so that's very important as parents. We know who our children are associating with. Especially when you bring them over to the house. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. so true. 
That's so true. So we can be distracted so fast and so easily mm -hmm. when we have friends over and the key children have their friends. But we have to make sure we are not far and we can see what they do, what they say. <laughs> we don't have to be, we, we can be like a, you know, like a, you know, observing from far, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, we have to check what they do because things can go so quickly, especially uh, some children have phones nowadays and I heard so many crazy stories, yes. even in churches. In, I heard crazy stories of things that went so quickly very quickly and children so things on the phone that they yeah, should have lesson. never yes. seen in the churches yeah in churches um yeah we gotta yeah that's why we, we have to guard and, and guarding our homes is not just in our house but even when we go out like when we go out with our family yeah, in places because you don't know like for example you take your child somewhere and like my wife said the other children have phones and tablets you don't know what they're looking at okay. and i've seen even in our churches, children are in churches on their phone playing video games, video games with fighting and all that. And you don't want, you know, so it's yeah. it's a very we have to be very aware of what's going on with our children and with our families. I just um, I just want to make a comment. Um, I, I'm sorry, I came late. So it's I'm okay. not, I didn't get it's to okay. hear the meat of it, but I've been listening to the to the comments and things that have been shared and um, I was thinking of the council, mm -hmm. you know, the seeking for counsel and the sharing, you know, this is something that, like Brother Ray say, you must bring to the Lord. I'm sorry, I'm going a few steps back, mm -hmm. but um, it's something that we must bring to the Lord always, mm -hmm. always. Mm -hmm. And and I know what um, uh, Sister Anne, what you were saying, and this is true as well. But only after we have communed with the Lord and say, Lord, this is mm -hmm. what I'm dealing with. This is what I'm struggling with. Um, would you please send someone if it's your will? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we are the ones choosing those individuals that we want to talk because we look at the appearance or we say like, oh, they look so good. They're they doing so good. They're still, you know, but we don't know. So... Yeah. That you don't you don't know the heart, but when we go to the Lord and say, Lord, can you choose that counselor for me? You know, like in the multiple of councils, you know, yeah. you go and so on. Um, Lord, you choose that person. Mm -hmm. You choose that person for me. And I'm saying this from my own experience. In the past, I used to do the same exact thing. I just felt that. You know, this person looks good and caring, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, and then you share and the person um, weakness was to share <laughs> stuff to others, you know, yeah. that was their weakness. Mm -hmm. So when I learned to bring things to the Lord, sometimes the Lord will choose to bring that person my way whom I can share. And sometimes the Lord will just say no. I want this to be between you and me mm -hmm. and let's work it out together because I need you to see my power mm -hmm. in this situation. There's something specific that I need to work out with you and I need no distraction. And so but there have been situations when I have had someone walking alongside with me and I had had to share because I needed help. But I needed a human help that, you know, is able to take me to the store, Daisy, and buy stuff <laughs> because I couldn't, Daisy, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and I needed help. So um, I would say in all things to put God first, mm -hmm. put God first in everything, every and any circumstance, and then ask him to provide the help, to provide the help in any way. And a help of and a, in a form of a person, mm -hmm. in a form of scripture, in the form of anything that he sees it fit for that season, for that situation. Mm -hmm. um, and as far as you know, who we um, bring to our homes, I I, I agree a hundred and ten percent. You know, that is very important. There's, it is very very important 
um, to be mindful of who we bring in our home. And I think much more so when we go out because sometimes at home you feel comfortable mm -hmm. you know or you are a little more vigilant you're looking but then when we go out say because we mentioned church a lot or maybe other places I don't know mm -hmm. we tend to get relaxed you know oh there's the other brother the sister we talking oh you, you know and then that portion of children just shuts down mm -hmm. And we're no longer paying attention to the children. We're so engrossed in the conversations. And I will say for mothers and even for fathers, this is something that has helped me greatly in this in this area. I realized that I, I was falling into that category a lot, and that was not good. And I sat with the Lord and I asked Him for wisdom and guidance in this area because I found myself going to same way mm -hmm. where I will meet with friends and I will completely relax shut down and not be aware like my defense mechanism was down my defenses were down right mm -hmm. and so I pray and the Lord say to me you know when, when you are empty you are seeking to fill that you're empty you know, as mothers, we do a lot of things. And like I got the, the tail end of what Sister Daisy was saying about that temperance, whoa, that temperance. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we do a whole lot of things. And sometimes we don't get that time to talk with another person and, you know, just, just spend some time with a friend or do something where fills your cup like you know a personal time with the Lord and our worship and other fellowship with friends and whenever you see your friend you feel like okay here's the opportunity so all of you is just like wanting and needing that moment that everything else shuts down mm -hmm. right but if we are careful to bring these things to the Lord and fill those areas of us we are not going to be starving you know like that every time it's time for you know every time we go out and meet with friends or anything like that we will not feel that great necessity like I need to talk and and I can't do the children at this time I need to just fill that void part of me okay. right so that is just something that has really helped uh, me personally in that area and um, and I agree with what everybody mentioned uh, 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 about um, the protection of you know being mindful rather of the things that of the home and things like that yeah. Amen. Amen. Amen so I just want to read something quick and um, before we transition to prayer it says the family tie is the closest is the closest the most tender and sacred of any on earth it was designed to be a blessing to mankind mm -hmm. so the family tie is very sacred more than anything on mm -hmm. earth and as we mentioned earlier for sister Alice she she wasn't here when we mentioned it the order of how God wants things to be so it's God first your family second mm -hmm. then the church then anything else after like your work um, your ministries. hobbies, your ministry. Yeah. Well, it can be God first, family, church, your ministry, then your work, then hobbies. So your family mm -hmm. is just under God. So after yeah. God is your family. Yeah. You can even picture it as the family circle. Yes. Jesus in the middle and mm -hmm. then another circle That's with right. all the other things around. Yeah. Uh, maybe priorities, church, ministries and things and then the rest. <laughs> but so, yeah, you can picture that too. So our family yeah. is our main ministry above all the other ministries. Mm -hmm. God, then our family. So with That's that right. being said, thank you so much for all the contributions. Yeah. It was very informative. Thank mm -hmm. you for sharing. We'll now transition to prayer. And we'll pray for our families. And if anyone has any prayer requests, you can please feel free to mention your prayer requests. So we can pray for each other.